Hey there, awesome folks. This is Mentor Shelly, wanting to make sure that you become a better version of yourself professionally, guys. I am excited to have this wonderful discussion with everybody that's going to be joining the discussion today. We are talking about... <sighs> Now, there's all these wonderful terms that are popping up on social media these days. Quiet quitting versus quiet firing. You know, of course, I want to make sure that you guys are aware that a lot of these concepts were around long before. Of course, I want to welcome everybody that's joining us on YouTube, on Facebook, and of course, now on Instagram, guys. We are talking about the term and what it means and how it affects your career in the area of quiet. Now, we talked about quiet quitting on a few lives before this. Now we're going to talk about quiet firing. Lord have mercy. These terms and these situations, they're becoming more popular, of course, Hello, Ati, how you doing? Um, v Sharks, how you doing on from Instagram? We are going to be talking today about the, the 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 now the key term Instagram, the key term quiet firing. Um, let's get started so we can at least, if I'm going to be talking to you guys about something, hello Duvaris, how you doing? Uh, from Instagram. If we're going to be talking about something, let's make sure we have our information correct and we are actually defining this well. So, of course, this article, of course, let's start with the first one. <laughs> ah, now it says, enough, <laughs> enough of quiet quitting, because, of course, I said we have talked about that. Um, let's see here. Um, guys, you're going to have to go on Instagram. I am actually... Um, sharing the article. So if you want to jump on my YouTube, you can go to mentor, I mean, go to youtube.com forward slash mentor Shelly, all one word. So you guys can see, hello, Miss Goddess Within 85. Welcome to the live stream. I want to make sure that you guys can see the articles that we're reviewing. So you can either um, go ahead and go on YouTube, um, youtube.com forward slash mentor Shelly, so you can see what I am sharing on there. So, of course, the first article, enough of quiet quitting. It's time to talk about quiet firing. This article is from Bloomberg, and we're going to talk about the author. Of course, the author is Jill Constance. This article was written about a week ago, but boy, quiet firing is not something, <laughs> is not something that is strange to us. They're just finding a new term for it. Quiet firing has heaped attention on so -called, the so-called slacker employee. Um, or those who, who seem content just fulfilling their job description. But of course, that's that would be a very mild description of quiet quitting. Okay, but experts say there's a flip side, quiet firing. Of course, with every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Of course, that reaction may not be the greatest for employees. So now the term has been general has been generalized buzz on the internet within definitions ranging from employers who are actively making working conditions miserable. <laughs> There's no shortage of that. All right. Um, for to forcing employees to resign, also known as constructive discharge or constructive dismissal. We're going to touch on that in this live today. And of course, the phrase can also apply to managers who neglect or otherwise dev device, um, divest, divest resources or opportunities from their employees, encouraging them to leave without firing them outright. In my opinion, it's a bit cowardly to do that because if you really want to get rid of somebody, then get rid of somebody. Come on, folks. Let me hold on. Let me let me come up front. So, I, if you want to get rid of somebody, just do it. Do not go the cowardly slash. I I I I want to. I don't want to deal with this person anymore. But I'm going to not fire them. Instead of not firing them, you put them through hell, literally psychological hell, <laughs> just to get rid of them. Let's continue. Of course. Um, human resources manager also said it's important to take a closer look at quiet firing. Um, it's pretty much, they make your life miserable till you quit. That's pretty much what quiet firing really is. I'm going to go into more of an official definition. That's just me. Just I have to express myself because a lot of people 
me included, have been quiet fired before. And we're going to go over some of the ways you can figure out that you're going to be quiet fired. Right. Human Resources also says it's important to take a closer look at quiet firing. Bonnie Gibbler, a recruiter at Workful Automation Software Company at Zapier, says quiet quitting doesn't gel with her experience with candidates who are often passionate about their work. I started thinking about why someone might start doing the bare minimum and realized that maybe the problem isn't so much the employee, but employers or managers that aren't doing much to support or invest in their employees. You think? Like, come on. Hey, Credit Solutionist, how you doing? Yes, I'm going through article number one, honey, because I got to make sure we get some background so we can really delve into this conversation. Yes, ma'am. So let's get back into this. My bad, y'all. I need to share back with y'all again. Now, I started thinking, of course, of course, it's a, a lot of this is because it's crappy employers. We talked about crappy employers last in, in last week's live. Unfortunately, Amazon is in that list. Anyway, I digress. Uh, let's see here. Dibbler says employers may use an intentional strategy to get people to quit without firing them, or they may simply be new to management and not even realize the impact of their actions. Some of them do, and some of them do not. Some of them do it purposely. So you see the 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 um the little snippet from Bonnie Dibbler there. Um, as previous companies at at a previous company where she worked, the human resources department used an evaluation system that would rate each employee's potential. Gibbler said workers with solid performance but um, pr purported low potential were, for the most part, simply left alone. OK, um, but no one really invested in growing them. They weren't getting raises. They weren't considered for promotions. Dibbler, off, Dibbler said often they had no idea why eventually they'd leave. They, what do you mean you don't have no idea why eventually they leave? Because you're not investing any time with them to develop them to be a better professional. Hello, 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 nurse. Come on now. You're not investing any time in them. They don't get promoted. Anybody with any common sense in their head is not going to stick around at a company very long, especially when you have, hey, Joan, how you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Nobody in their right mind is going to stick around at a company if you have enough credentials and enough um, experience to find employment elsewhere. Let's let's get real here. So. This is often no idea why eventually they'd leave because they felt unappreciated. Hands up for all the employees that's felt appreciated in life with their employer. I can get a million people in here and that still wouldn't be enough. Put a one in the comments if you've ever felt unappreciated at work. <laughs> Come on, Credit Solutions. Hey, 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 put a one in the comments if you've ever felt unappreciated at work. Come on, y'all. Let's be real with it. Of course. There's more history of quiet firing. Thank you, Joan. There's more history of quiet firing than there is of quiet quitting, which is there are two terms that are coined for, you know, social media purposes these days. But really quiet quitting. There you go, Miss Credit Solutionist. We appreciate the honesty in this live tonight. Come on, Instagram, you can do the same. If you want to see what's going on on the screen and the article that I am reading and the links, you can definitely join us on youtube.com forward slash mentor Shelly, all one word. Now, and they wonder why they left. Duh. In many cases, I saw those people go on to do quite well in their next roles with more supportive leadership. Duh. Of course. <laughs> exactly. Credit solutions. One, 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 one. <laughs> Listen. Like, hello. Of course they're going to do well. In a and in a labor market with two jobs for each unemployed person, workers who feel unappreciated don't have to stick around. Bye-bye. Listen, I always tell you in almost every video that I do on this here channel and on Instagram, you are in the business of you. If they're not handling their business and they're not supporting you and you feel like you are being neglected or you feel like you're being mistreated at the job, you have the choice to tell them bye-bye and keep it moving. But of course, this is the whole goal of quiet firing. So 
let's let's finish this up. In a labor market with two jobs for each unemployed person, workers who feel unappreciated don't have to stick around. The U.S. economy added 315,000 jobs in August, show, showing robust growth even in the face of persistent inflation and rising interest rates. Of course, that's her piece there. Ella, an organizational psychologist and diversity consultant, cute fancy name for they want you to think that they're diverse, but they're really not. Hey there, Miss Nikki, how you doing? Welcome to the live show. Go ahead if you want to see the um, the slides and what we're and the articles and the videos that we're going to be going over tonight. You hop on youtube.com forward slash mentor Shelly and uh, get so you can see what's going on. We get you know with the full full circle. Okay, what it says here, um, an organization, yeah, psychologist said that a lot of quiet firing happens because most managers aren't clear on what's expected of them in terms of giving them feedback and building relationships with their team members. You don't say, because some people in management do not need to manage people. They need to have some people skills first. Yeah, I'm all in the camera. Let me let, let me make sure y'all see me. Hold on. Mo a lot of some of those managers that are doing absolute damage and is causing quiet quitting issues, I mean, quiet, quiet firing issues, don't need to be in charge of people. Some of them are not people persons. They don't have the skills to be managers. They don't know how to build teams. They don't even need to be in position in the first place. Sometimes it's who knows who knows who knows who why they're in those positions. But I digress. Let's continue. Now, as a result of many leaders see their coaching, their direct reports as an extra thing to do. Yeah, it's like, oh, oh, well, I, I don't want to be bothered with this employee. A lot of times that's how it ends up coming off. And this pretty much goes into what it means. I'm just going to go over the last paragraph, of course. I think a lot of people who are quiet quitting are actually working under poor leaders. <laughs> yes, yes. Tell the whole truth. Why don't you tell the whole truth? Absolutely. Which makes it hard for them to stay motivated and have invested in going above and beyond the bare minimum, Dibbler said. Guys. As an HR professional, we encourage managers in different departments to develop their people. How in the world can you expect monumental changes, monumental growth and development on your team when you are not investing the time? Come on, employers. I want y'all to come on this too here and really pay, you know, really, really participate in this because at the end of the day, you're only as good as your team. And if you're not developing your team, then your team is not going to make you look good. Not only make you look good, but are, it's going to show what kind of manager you really are. Just saying, just keeping in the thousand. Now, let's go over the video that pretty much sums it all up for us. Hold on a second. Let's see here. Okay. Let's see. All righty. All right. Let's pause the video for a second so we can include it in the live. Guys, if you have questions, concerns, if you want to make a comment about what we're talking about so far, have y'all been abused by employers too on, on the Instagrammies? Put a one in the comments to let me know. We're not the only ones over here that are experiencing quiet firing because you have some managers that have a no guts. Some of them are cowards, which is why they go this route to get rid of people in the organization. And they truly, a lot of times, do not represent the entire organization. They're just full of crap. Let's just keep it a thousand. All right. Let's start. Guess, let's get started with this. Oh, started all the demands that this job has to offer. However, I've yet to receive a raise. Are you quiet? Firing me? Um, the team has just been working on other things right All now. Alrighty, because I would hate to loudly quit. No, no, I no. Would hate to back uh, out. We have heard about quiet quitting, which is basically people not going beyond the nine to five job description. But what do you know about quiet firing? It's another mm. buzz term on social media, and it could be happening to you right now. Yep. How would you know, though? Here to help us make sense of this is James Warnick. He's a partner and the chief revenue officer at Higher Well. It's a recruiting and staffing firm based here in Chicago. Good morning right. to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. 
Uh, good to have you here. Uh, this is not a new practice. It's not an unusual tactic. In fact, a recent LinkedIn poll found 80% of people said they've either seen or experienced quiet firing. Oh, yeah. What is it? Over here. I'm, I'm surprised it's... It, Come on. I think it's probably closer to 100. Look, quiet firing, it's not a new concept. I'm glad it's getting talked about more now. Yep. Um, it's Frankly, it's a job that sucks. It's you know, a place <laughs> that they're not outright firing you, but they don't really care if you're still there, and that's how they treat you. So. Yep organizations that um you know there's no raises there's no promotions there's no career development no feedback they're mm -hmm. cutting you out of meetings right. um maybe it's just generally toxic or disrespectful environments yep it's the kind of places that people then quietly quit so these concepts are very much kind of they're very related yikes yeah i know a lot of people right now are going hmm yeah i think this might be <laughs> me uh what are some of the signs your company is quiet firing you is it the boss avoiding eye contact is it being excluded from meetings all that all yeah, I mean, it's all those things. Like, again, yeah. it, it comes back to like, if there's no career development and they're not invested in you, you know, it's it, the, the small things are communication. They're not including you in meetings, like you said. Uh, they're kind of cutting you out of other things. But the bigger things are really kind of raises, promotions, career development. You know, the, the, there's no progression in your career path there. Nope. Uh, when you don't have those things and you have some level of like toxicity um, from the management, I mean, that's. Uh, I, I think everyone knows when they're being quietly fired um, to, on some level. Push so. that the door. So if you are Push being out. quiet fired, Push what out. should a person do in that situation? Move on. Life's too short to, to work at any place See? that you know isn't gonna isn't gonna help you in your career or isn't frankly just isn't gonna make you happy. Um, and I think that bye -bye. you know we've hit a point. Um, and if the pandemic taught us one thing, it's mm -hmm. that um, when, when things go south. There's always other options out there or you can find other options. You know, yeah. there's um, people found a way to kind of keep their lives going, um, even when maybe they lost their position in the past couple of years, which is obviously unfortunate. But there's a lot of companies out there hiring now. There's a lot of companies out there that need people badly that have oh, yeah. better career opportunities out there. Go find one. Um, you exactly. should never kind of sit in a dead end job or a place. Where never. Not be, you know, respected. I know that's right. Uh, you mentioned the pandemic. I'm sure that's part of this. But what is the driving force behind not just quiet firing, but quiet quitting too? Yeah, well, so here's the thing that was interesting. Um, Gallup actually does a lot of research Hello, on employee Luda. engagement, which is what this Thanks is really about. Us. Um, so employee engagement actually peaked near an all-time high in, in 2020. Right. It's dipped a little bit. Um, this year, I think it went from like 36% um, in 2020. Mm -hmm. This year, it's around 32%. But it's still high compared to the last 20 years or so. The 28 to 31% range oh, yeah. is usually where it's been. Uh, what that relatively means is like, um, we're not we're not seeing some new paradigm where things are getting worse, but we are just seeing a paradigm where younger people um, have an outlet to actually talk about how dissatisfied they exactly. are with their work now, which is why these things go viral on TikTok. So exactly. if anything, the big change is that it's just more of an open environment where people are able to kind of discuss what they're dissatisfied with, make jokes yep. about it, um, and hopefully Hello, get you know, some employers Ruth. out Welcome there to wake to up the live. That they could be losing people and not doing We're as well as they could be if they just treated well, people. Well, quiet firing is. I think is. a lot of those younger workers are not influencing, but inspiring some of the older generations in their workforce too to be like, well, you know what? These Gen Zers, these millennials might have a point. Might yep. have a point. Uh, James Hornick, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I knew this was going to be good. When you started off with your job might suck. You uh, think? That did it for me. <laughs> I knew it was going to be great. Thank you, sir. All righty. So, guys, that was literally the be all and end all to it. He pretty much summed it up right there. You're not getting any raises. You're not getting any promotions. You're kind of, uh, you know, you're kind of ignored. They don't include you in important meetings. It's a whole thing. When I tell you, you know, <laughs> My personal experience with quiet firing. <laughs> I um, was working in a HR capacity. Can't say what type of organization because people that may know me can pretty much link it to <laughs> what it is I've done in the past 15 to 20 years. But my experience was... I had been in an organization for a couple of years, and uh, it was always the, the the specific manager that I had was extremely. When I say nitpicky, y'all, when I say nitpicky, I mean if I wasn't dotted, 
and the T wasn't crossed. It was, um, that will be dinged from your performance from your performance review. When I tell you that heifer got on my nerves. <laughs> I mean, I'm not working there no more. It's been years since I've been there. But I haven't got on my nerves. And she nitpicked to the point where I dreaded going to work. She nitpicked at everything. Oh, well, you need to do this, 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 and that. And added the more to my load. And because the performance review was based on how she viewed my performance because I got, I was managed by for one year. I was there for about three and a half years, but for one year I was with a different manager, completely different performance review because it's subjective in a lot of ways. And it shouldn't be, but it is, it shouldn't be, but it is just depends on the organization you're with. And, Oh, here's the kicker. Here's how I know I was being quiet fired around the time when um, I was like, let me start looking for other um, means of employment because there's some things that are shaking up. Oh, all of a sudden, right? They, this organization has been around for more than 40 years, right? Thriving, has great reputation. But all of a sudden they have layoffs. You want to hear the kick of y'all in that layoff? <sighs> This, there was about seven or eight people on my team. And it wasn't the layoff per se. It was how they did the layoff. Instead of saying, let's let go everybody, they said, oh, we're going to take hours away for a set period of time or until we get through this process. And then I think it was maybe for six months or for a year or something till they get their books all together. Let's hear it. The other six people on the team, right? They only got 10 hours taken away from five. Some got five hours taken away. Some of them are clinical, but some of them got five hours taken away. Some people got 10 hours taken away. Y'all want to know how many hours they reduced me to? They took 20 hours from me. So I was supposed to be, I was supposed to work for y'all. Everybody else get 10 hours a week shaved off of their hours, but I got my hours cut in half. Boo boo kitty, who are you fooling? So I either had the, and wait, it gets better. They scheduled that. They said the schedule I had to sign off on was in the middle of the day, so I couldn't even add another job to it. If that ain't quite firing. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so I either had a choice of accepting this nonsense or leaving with a severance. Yeah. So y'all know what I did, right? Got the hell up out of Dodge, baby. <laughs> yeah. I got the hell up out of Dodge. I said, give me this money. Peace out. Why? Because they knew, they knew I was being quite fried and they knew one other false move and I could have sued for wrongful termination. So they made sure they gave me a severance package to kind of shut me up and to somewhat prevent me from suing them. Yeah, so I have had my experience with being quiet fired. It's, it, it's just a new term for sucker moves that employers make when they want to get rid of you. That's really what this is. They want to get rid of you. They're not investing any extra time into you. They're not giving you the attention and the, 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 the career development that you need to be more successful in your role. So <laughs> the trick is you're not on, you're not, you're not hitting up their unemployment insurance. It's insurance fee, people. They still pay a premium. Yeah, exactly, Great Solution. The trick is to, exactly, the trick is to torture you till you leave. This caused psychological damage, y'all. And, and here's the funny part. There are some companies that do this deliberately. And there's another term they have for that. It's called either constructive dismissal, which he mentioned, or constructive um, termination. Um, or, let me, as a matter of fact, hold on. 
let me get to it. Let me show y'all what I'm talking about. When I say constructive dismissal, the term constructive dismissal, as far as, far as finelaw.com is concerned, Constructive dismissal is also known as constructive discharge, constructive termination. It's a modified claim of wrongful termination because the way they do it, they can be accused of that because they straight up tortured you till you left. <laughs> Jesus, be a fence. Yeah, wrongful, wrongful constructive dismissal occurs when instead of firing any employee, the employer makes wrongful, makes the employer wrongfully makes working conditions so intolerable pretty much torture you, um, until the employee is forced to resign. As in wrongful termination, the employer must violate the employment contract or public policy by targeting that employee. Continuing below to learn more about constructive dismissal. There are some companies that, okay, elements. So specific elements, constructive dismissal, quiet firing, they're synonymous terms at this point. An employee can't simply just quit and claim that he or she was constructively dismissed. California, for example, requires an employee to prove it. His or her working conditions were was so unusually adverse that a reasonable employee in his or her per, per position would have felt compelled to resign. And, uh, it's not or, it's and, uh, the employer either intended to force such resignation or had actual knowledge of the intolerable working conditions. Y'all, this is something that some some employers actively participate in. As a matter of fact, yep, the trick is to torture you. And uh, yeah, they all, they can't, yeah, dent in promotions, knowing darn well you're qualified, but they push it to the foot, yeah. Oh my gosh, exactly. And denying promotions. Exactly, Joan. Like frog getting slowly boiled. You're going to get killed. But because it's being turned up little by little by little by little. Oh my goodness. You guys are so right. Because it's like, they don't want you there. They pretty much ignore you. <laughs> Straight up ignore you. Don't try to develop you. In some situations, you have supervisors that the only time they wanted to talk to you when somebody complained about you. But when you wanted to talk to them about development and training and things of that nature, they straight up blew you off. So guys, I definitely understand. Quiet firing is nothing to play with. If you guys even think you're being quiet fired, please make sure you have your resume ready. If you think you're being quiet fired, make sure you have your resume ready and it not just be ready, but it goes out to you're applying for jobs. You're applying for, you know, you're, you're applying for, you know, for different positions or you got your side hustle you're working on. Are you doing both? Literally. <laughs> Unfortunately, some of the social constructs is like high school. Because you have the ones that kiss up to the boss um, that sometimes don't get anywhere. And then you have some of them that kiss up to the boss or is a, a, a relative of the of the owner. So the supervisors have to um, be nicer or give that person promotions more so because nepotism is very alive and well in the workplace. Okay. Um, and then <laughs> um, you never heard what saying before, mama. Put it back in the chat for me. Um, and then you have the, the ones that are the geeks, the ones that are actually getting the work done, but a lot of the, a lot of the jocks, I guess, in the work organization or the, the alpha males or the people that are, you know, that are supposedly the showpiece for the company, um, in a lot of situations take credit for what the, for the work that's being done. Oh yeah. Um. The frog sits there in the water chilling until it gets super hot and he can't move. Yep. None of y'all. And I mean, I don't want anybody to have to be subjected to that foolishness. Hey, Reese Rock. Um, from Instagram. I don't ever want any one of you to have to be subjected to this crap. And if you even. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. 
Um, absolutely. <sighs> yeah, and the frog just literally sits there till it can't move no more because it's too hot. Do not allow any employer, guys, to get you to the point where you are literally driving yourself crazy because you're not being treated you're treated being treated like crap like this job is bs i don't need to be here anymore they are getting on my ever loving nerves and if this come say something to me one more time i'm about to pop off and you might get fired. <laughs> you might not get quietly fired you might get fired for real cuz that's happened to me too <laughs> That's happened to me too. I didn't get quiet fired. I got straight up fired because I, I I guess I went against the favorite in the organization because she was full of crap. She didn't have half the talent I did, but because, you know, sometimes being pretty and having lighter complexion, no matter what your culture is, can work for you in the in the in, in the work environment. But we're not gonna talk about that today. Don't please don't let me go down that road because we can be here for a long time. <laughs> okay, that was what was going on with that situation. Um, so I didn't get quietly fired from that. I straight up got fired. And and you want to hear what's funny? Talk about oh, I have performance issues, but you only trained me on twenty percent of what I, I I did. You didn't give me the proper training, but you fired me for performance. <laughs> I still want to sue that company. That was wrong with termination straight up. <laughs> I really do want to see that company. Trust and believe. Do both. But guys, I want to make sure y'all understand. If you, you've been with an organization for a while, you're not being promoted. Every time you go up for a promotion, someone else gets it. That's either does not have, if you don't have, that has less, um, that has less experience. If you are at work and you literally feel, and I'm not even joking, she's credit solution is correct. This is some serious stuff. There's there's some jobs that people literally go stir crazy with the amount of stress. I was working somewhere so much, like. I had all um, this pent up tension that it drove me to the gym every day just to release it. So my family didn't didn't think I was crazy when I came home. Like it got that serious at one point. Because before they turned around and fired me, I had been on several interviews. I was looking while I was there. So I saved the, the little couple of days vacation that they gave me. And I was burning up them job boards at night, boy. Listen. Because at the end of the day, guys, your career, the things you do to keep food on the table, whether it be your side hustle that can become your main hustle or that job, maybe one, if you decide, if you go into overemployment, great. That way you have two options. Whatever you do to provide, make sure it's legal, of course, whatever you do to provide for your family should not literally drive you crazy and give you mental issues. And if it's doing that, guys, it's time to go. It's time to go. If it's literally driving you crazy, if you have a car that's 2008 or older or younger, hop in that car and turn on and, and download the Uber driver app and go drive for Uber for a while before you sit there and let these people drive you crazy. I'm so serious. No job. Absolutely, positively, no job is worth your sanity. Absolutely none. No job is worth your sanity. So please do not sacrifice your sanity for some folks that could care less if you live or die. Because if they're doing quiet firing with you, they already don't give a crap. So, guys, if you have, if you're in the situation right now or you feel like some of those things, like the, the tension, the energy, whenever you go to work, it feels like death con five. 
<laughs> not panhandling, Joe. <laughs> no. I said Uber, honey. Uber, Lyft, okay? <laughs> DoorDash, not panhandling, y'all. Oh, Jesus, not panhandling. Oh, Lord, you funny. But, um, guys, an organization can feel the need to do whatever it is that they're doing. But at no point should you sacrifice your sanity for a job. You can get another one. Your sanity is more important. It really is. Okay? Your sanity is more... <laughs> Y'all silly. $7.14 a day to panhandle. Um, Ma'am, I said legal endeavors. Did I not say legal? Legal. Legal endeavors. Credit solution is you're funny. But... <laughs> legal legal endeavors okay legal endeavors okay <laughs> you ain't got to do that don't listen to her y'all panhandling exactly joan because you know she's joking oh boy now y'all listen we have just one more um we understand what the hell constructive dismissal slash uh slash what they call it, <laughs> constructive admission, that's quiet firing. Now, The Root has, a, or has an article on this that they wrote yesterday. Quiet quitting, the act of doing less. Okay, okay, we know what quiet quitting is. We've talked about that on this channel. Of course, now, but now according to the recent Instagram post from 25 Black Women of Beauty and Black Women in Beauty, it seems that you may need to start watching your back and front for signs that your boss is quiet firing you. If you're rolling your eyes at that last sentence, don't worry, I am too, because I sure did. Five signs, your boss is firing, you're quiet firing you. You guys can go to that Instagram post. It's from 25 underscore BWB. In their post, <clears throat> which is now has had 350 likes, 25 BWB lays out five signs that your boss may be trying to make your life at work so miserable, as I said, y'all, as I said, as I said. Yes, ma'am. If they're making your life miserable, deuces, be out, be breezy, I'm out. Not directly in that way, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah, if you've been at the job a while and you haven't received a raise, we did We did just talk about that. If your rate your is considerably low for the company average, let's say you're all in one, everybody's in the same position, but you have the lowest pay. Uh-oh. Come on, Instagram. Don't do this to me right now. Oh, Lord. Stay with me. Don't fall. All right. There we go, Instagram. Now, you've been there for a while, and somehow you get wind of the fact that 20 other people that got hired after you is getting paid at least five to 10 grand more than you. No. And you are there training them. That'd be the kicker sometimes. <laughs> I got to laugh from not trying to punch somebody. Yeah. If you made it through this, wait, 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 wait. Yes, you've been at the same company for three years or more and subject to promotion has uh, for a promotion has never come up. Your boss refuses to meet with you or repeatedly cancels meetings with you. You're often excluded from meetings that are important to the work that you do. Yes, withholding information. Mm -hmm. And your boss complains about you or gossips about you with other employees. All right. If you made it through the list, you're rolling your eyes now, especially if you're a person of color. PLC over here. Okay. Yeah. Because of course the root is about it, it, it is written by us. Now, um, you already experienced treatment like this at work on the regular. Can I get an amen for that? Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think it's ever okay to try to force someone out of their job. But if you want to make, if you want my humble opinion, unless you're leaving for a better opportunity, stick around and let them lay you off. Yeah, part of their goal is trying to not do that um, and co then collect unemployment. Listen, y'all. Literally, that's it for that article. But at the end of the day, folks, you are in the business of you. Whether employers want to play games or not, you are in the business of you. Like all of us, the same 
the same job we are doing for these employers, it are also services we can offer to businesses for a fee, monthly fee. Instead of having somebody do their do the job that you're doing at your job now full time, you can convert your skills, um, you know your qualifications, um, your education, and all of that. You can convert that into a viable consulting or a virtual assistant type of business. Guys, of course, that's going to take time to build. But at the end of the day, if you start now, <laughs> um, if you start now, you never know what can happen. Oh, a good question. Do you think quiet firing happens more in big corporations than small ones? It happens in both because I was I was quite fired from a larger organization. I mean, when you say larger organization, you're talking 10,000, 15,000. Yeah, that happens all the time, especially in larger corporations. Larger corporate, the smaller corporations may not do it as fast depending on how they're structured and depending on what it is that you're doing for that organization. So it just depends. But I think it happens equally, whether it's a small company or a large, because you have crappy managers in every one. Let's be clear. Yeah, you have crappy managers in all of them. So it can happen in either one. But I'm I'm probably going to lean more towards, although I, I'm saying it's kind of even, I'm going to lean towards large towards larger organizations because there's more, there's a larger payroll. They may say, well, we have we have this person's position, but then we can divvy up their duties between three people and get rid of them. Or slowly, one of the other signs that you're being quiet fired is that they're starting to take away essential duties that you were handling for the, you know, the large part of your job. So it just depends. You know, it, in a lot of this, guys, it, it really comes down to an employer that is partway cowardly um, and is not bold enough to say, I don't want you here no more. I'm going to fire you. Two, they may be taking the I don't want you hitting up my unemployment um, type of route. Or three, it may not be the organization. It may be the manager or the supervisor that you report to and is giving a whole different viewpoint of you to higher ups or to management when that could be nothing could be further from the truth. Huh. Oh, yeah. Well, there's two sides to that coin too, um, Credit Solution is. Yeah, there's a, there's a great reason why um, companies hate unions. For, the, for what unions are supposed to do, they really are supposed to stand up in the collective bargaining agreement for, um, for the rights of the employees. So a lot of this stuff could be sifted out by unions. However, unfortunately, a lot of unions these days... Um, kind of go towards the collect dues and not being as useful as they could be. That's the unfortunate part. Um, if they're actually doing their job, instead of just collecting dues and acting like they're listening to their employees, but they're more chummy chummy with the management of the company you're supposed to be keeping accountable for these employees, it would be great if they handled their business like they're supposed to. But unfortunately, a lot of unions today do not. So we hope there are a few organizations out there. I think UPS is one of them that still have unions that are efficient. However, there's some, where's my, where, where's my water? That there's some, and I'm gonna sip some water on that, that, are, that, that <laughs> their unions are utter garbage. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Miss Bernadette, you work for the... Welcome, Bernadette. We appreciate your comment. Um, I, you work for the U.S. federal government and you belong to the NTEU union. Um, I really hope you are having 
um, a much better experience than I've heard recently of what, what unions are doing. I know someone personally that had a very bad, not so efficient experience with unions. So I'm hoping you guys that your particular NTEU union is really doing their job and not just collecting money. Absolutely. We appreciate it. NTU works for you. Awesome. All right. So I'm glad to hear that they are actually doing their job as a union and standing up for you guys um, in the in the premise of, especially with this quiet firing and all this other unnecessary crap going on. And of course, um, how you doing? Of course, you are. Well, welcome, welcome. Awesome. So you can definitely give a different perspective and I am happy to hear that you are your union steward. So you'll help to keep them accountable as well. Because at the end of the day, the collective bargaining agreement is supposed to keep everybody in line and doing what they're supposed to do. Bad managers are not. Um, they are supposed to like, okay, well, if these, this is not what you guys agreed upon on how to treat the employee. These are the things that need to happen. These are the things that need to change. And all of that needs to be documented. So, of course, you have experience, Ms. Bernadette, in dealing with the union. So I'm very glad to hear that the, the unions that you have experience with. Exactly. <laughs> yes, you have to study it because you definitely want to make sure you use it to your advantage if the the agreements in there are not being followed. So it's very important. I'm very glad to hear that you are a part of an efficient union. Um, because I can tell you from a friend of mine's experience, it wasn't that great. And she did get wrongfully terminated and they didn't fight for her, um, as they should. So I want to make sure you guys have a better sense of what quiet firing really is. It's really just making your life miserable until you leave on your own. And if you are experiencing this, ways to fight back, ways to get the hell out of Dodge, <laughs> ways to tell them peace out. <sighs> yes, yes, awesome. Yeah, credit solution is, of course, if your union stewards are handling their business like Miss Bernadette is saying with her particular union, awesome. This is wonderful. But a lot of employers <laughs> want to keep employees accountable, but they don't want to be accountable themselves, which is why Amazon and Starbucks are fighting tooth and nail not to have them, especially if they're efficient. Listen, <clears throat> I love my little Starbucks coffee in the morning, but their organization is vehemently against unions. They're, they're, that fight's been going on for what? Has it been more than a year? It's, it's been in the last year. They've been going back and forth. Now, when Amazon shuts production now for a meeting because of unions, you know. <laughs> you know. You know. They do not want that in their organization. Based on my last live last week, Amazon already got some issues. <laughs> yeah. OSHA's already looking into some of their issues. So the union is going to bring even more smoke. So guys, I want to make sure that if you are going through that, get that resume updated, please. Get the resume updated. If you want me to handle that for you, or if you want me to provide that service, if you want me to go ahead and take care of that, revising that resume for you. You can go to mentorshirley.com forward slash consultations. Book a consultation for me to completely do the overhaul of your resume, or we can do a live review with a follow-up call so I can make sure that you have a resume that is going to work for you so you can get a job quickly. Or um, you can do that. If you don't get the job as fast as you can tell those that employer to go bye-bye, then definitely start looking into if Uber Lyft is not going to do it for you, then start going to talk, start registering with different agencies. Um, they have a lot of temporary work out there. So that may tide you over until you find the job you really want. Um, but depending on what you decide to do, depending on the area, and if you're close to a metropolitan area, 
Uber and Lyft can definitely help with those things. Oh, of course. Um, all right, go ahead and this um Miss Bernadette, absolutely. You can go to mentorshelly.com forward slash consultations to get started on that. Let me go ahead and put the link up for you. Go ahead, right there. Um, you can go to that page and um, just click on the um, other offers, which is the last button below. You'll see a video and you'll see two buttons for career strategy. And then you can go to other services. Once you click on that, then you can actually um, book the consult with me. Um, I can definitely will help you with that. That is definitely something. Um, I want to make sure your, you guys' resumes are right because I don't want y'all to have to deal with quiet firing. Quiet firing is mental torture, y'all. Nobody deserves that. Nobody deserves to have to deal with that foolishness, not being heard being ignored, not being developed, and being paid low. Like, come on now. This is like triple whammies all over the place. Nobody wants that. Oh, no problem, Miss Bernadette. I'm glad to be of service. <laughs> no problem. We will get working on that for you, Miss Bernadette. We'll get started. Um, the definitely we I do appreciate you stopping by, of course, and, and joining in in the uh in the live stream today. Absolutely. Guys, I want to make sure you have everything in place, your resume, your cover letters, all of your letters in place. These are things that I do also offer service reviews and also um, offer in consultations as well. Um, you can go to mentorshirley.com forward slash consultations as well as if you have teenagers that are getting ready to graduate or wait a minute, we're in September. Then left high school already. Hold on. Ah, here we are. And uh, they're either, this is your last year of high school, it's your last year of college, and you want them to get their, their butts in gear as far as careers and jobs and things of that, this and that nature is concerned. I wish I had this when I was in school, whether it be college or whether it be after high school, because believe it or not, y'all, I had no idea what the hell I wanted to do with my life when I left high school. I pretty much went with a major that my mother loved. God rest her soul. She passed away about 15, 16 years, 16, 17 years ago. So I had no clue. I was the, <laughs> oh my goodness, absolutely. She finally, fi Miss Bernadette said she finally listened. I learned to speak up as a lesson of this experience. Yep, I went to the regional administrator twice. Wonderful. All right. Yeah, quiet firing does suck. <laughs> it really does. And I want to make sure you have the tools absolutely to tell them peace out. And also, um, if you have teenagers that are getting ready to graduate from high school or, or this is your last year and you want them to be ready, I do have this book called From Clueless Teenager to Consummate Professional. Seven steps to, for them to cultivate the life and the economic life and career they want. You can go to mentorshirley.com forward slash book to obtain that. It is in ebook form right now, and it's going to be offered in audiobook form and in actual book form very soon. I am working on that behind the scenes. But guys, I really do appreciate you guys coming along tonight to join me, Miss Bernadette. We welcome you to the show and we welcome your participation. Of course, the lovely, the lovely credit solutionist, um, our friends over here on Blessing Roots, Ricey Rock, um, Hoda Han, I'm sorry, I'm probably mispronouncing it, my bad, Miss um, Neek, Neek Cunningham, Goddess, <clears throat> let me see. Goddess Within 85, um, Lewis, Utty Lewis, D. Devaris, and V. Sturks, and everyone that joined me on the live, either on the, um, on the live, on Facebook, on YouTube. Guys, don't forget to like, um, comment below once the, once the video has rendered. Share this with other people that are going through this quiet quit mess. I mean, quiet, quiet firing mess. Before I leave, make sure, one, have your resumes updated. Two, if it's getting to the point where your mental stability is getting 
to the point where you feel like you're about to kill somebody, leave. Hop in that car. Get. Appreciate you so much. Oh, no problem. I appreciate it. You're welcome, uh, Miss Bernadette. I just want to make sure y'all become a better version of yourself professionally. And being in a quiet firing situation, y'all, y'all can't be your better selves. You want to knock people out, like literally. So I don't want you guys to ever be subjected to that. And if you find that you're in that kind of environment, start preparing. Get your resume out there. Start talking to folks. 50, 25 to 50 people that you have on LinkedIn, if you have a LinkedIn. Please make sure everybody that's on this live with me has a LinkedIn profile. Because if you don't, that is also a service I provide to help you get that LinkedIn going. Um, yeah. That No. No, no, Miss Joan. Hold on. Oh, wait a minute. You, you're welcome, Miss Bernadette. Ms. Jo yes, we appreciate you, Joan, holding it down. But Ms. Joan, we got to get that objective off the resume, honey. We got we have to do summary of qualifications or summary at the top. That is, yeah. Yeah, the objective is about 25 years old. They don't use that on resumes anymore. So you want to make sure that you take that off and you definitely do that. We appreciate you, Joan. We appreciate your support, Miss Bernadette. Credit Solution is Miss Joan and everyone that joined us on the live on Instagram. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> We're gonna do, yeah, we're gonna do some more resume reviews. So definitely um check out. I have a couple of resume resume reviews that I have videos that I have on the channel already. Credit solution is we have to talk offline about that. Come on now. Objective. That's been done and gone, y'all. Come on, we talked about that. So apparently, I'm gonna have to get talk to you guys more about what needs to be on the resume and what needs to come off. And objective is one of them, y'all. But I digress. If you guys have any questions or concerns and you definitely have just general questions that you want to ask, you can definitely go to mentorshelly.com forward slash contact where you can leave me a voicemail or an email message. I am more than happy to return your voicemail or email within 24 hours, guys. I am here to help you become a better version of yourself professionally. Credit solution is, we got to talk about that objective offline. But I want to make sure that you have what you need Especially if you're experiencing quiet firing, get that resume up, get in that Uber, start doing Lyft. That's what these phones are for. No, my phone is being used for Instagram right now. But download that app and get in that car to get away from that toxic environment because they literally go through the process of creating a toxic environment um, so you leave on your own. Nah, bruh. So do what you need to do to get out of there so you don't have to have your mental stability rocked <laughs> of course it's okay um listen millennial or not y'all i want to make sure you become a better version of yourself so that's why i i want you guys to win in the marketplace i want you guys to improve your economy i want you guys to make sure you are in the business of you you're not in the business of oh i'm working for this person i have to get no is it going to build your economy? You got to start there first. All right. So guys, if you have questions, of course, hit me up at mentorshirley.com forward slash contact. My links, if you definitely want to book a consultation for a resume, um, for resume restructuring, live resume reviews, or if you want to go over other things like your cover letters, your like letters of recommendation, I have that service available as well, as well as interview coaching and other things and linked in consultations. All of that is offered at mentorshelly.com forward slash consultations. If you have a, a young adult in your house that you want to be economically independent from you, definitely have grab this book for them at mentorshelly.com forward slash book. It is an ebook now, but it will be available in other formats in the very near future. Guys, I want to make sure you become a better version of yourself professionally, whether you are in a job with a, with crazy employers or you are getting ready to go off into the adventure of finding your own voice in the working world, whether it means you're starting off on your own or you're venturing into a new career or you have an employer that literally makes life 
miserable. It's time to make some changes, and I'm here to help with that. Guys, take care. If you have questions, hit me up at mentorshirley.com forward slash contact, or you can leave a link, um, a review, or a comment below once this video radio renders, guys. Thank you so much for joining the live, and you guys have a wonderful night. Bye.